This month's RV newscast will cover the latest RV and travel data news. May 2023 RV production numbers are out and shipped units are down again, both versus the prior month and year over year. We'll cover all the numbers so you can get a better gauge if it's time to buy, sell, or hold an RV. We'll also discuss the outpouring of comments received from last month's newscast about Florida State Parks limiting out-of-state reservations. There's a lot to cover. I'm John Marucci. Let's get started with the news. Before we look at our monthly data, just a quick reminder why we do this portion of the news. The main goal of giving you a data-driven perspective of the news is so you can understand the market and make better decisions. For example, a year ago, it was a strong seller's market with used RV prices fetching more than some owners paid for their new RVs. Today is the exact opposite. We started sounding the alarm a year ago in May to our viewers that a correction was coming and so it did. So let's jump into the data portion of the news. On June 26, 2023, the RVIA posted the latest RV wholesale shipment data for May 2023. Production numbers continue a downward trend compared to the prior month and are significantly down year over year as expected. 30,919 total RVs were shipped in May compared to the record 50,529 in May 2022, down about 39% year over year. Travel trailers witnessed a significant decline with only 20,595 shipped in May versus a record of 35,213 a year ago, about a 42% decline. It was by far the worst May for towable trailer shipments other than 2020 in over six years. Almost 4,000 fewer trailers were shipped in May versus 2016. The long and short of it is that the RV industry is in a downturn with production dropping and less demand. The industry greatly overproduced during and after the pandemic, betting that RV demand, which spiked during the pandemic, would be the new norm. The bet was a huge miscalculation with a massive hangover effect. In 2021, the industry produced 600,000 RVs. The forecast for 2023 is now only 300,000. This roller coaster has dynamic impacts throughout the entire supply chain. It was an epic failure in planning, no matter how the industry spends it. It means that potential RV buyers can swing significant discounts on new but stale inventory right now, with the caveat of pandemic trailer quality issues we have discussed many times on this newscast. Meanwhile, RVs for sale on RVTrader.com are declining with new units seeing a substantial decline since last month and used units for sale continuing to increase. This points to a significant discount on new units that are crowding out the sale for used units. There were 131,676 new units for sale as of June 28th. This is down about 10,600 units from late May's 142,311 units and down approximately 32,000 new units versus late June 2022. Used units for sale increased by about 500 to 53,424, up from 52,916 last month, as more people attempt to unload used RVs. This is now the 11th week in a row with used for sale units above 50,000 after four months in a row below 50,000. This time last year, the number of used RVs for sale was 54,169. So we have about 750 fewer used units for sale versus late June 2022. As expected, we are seeing new inventory decline and used units for sale increasing at the end of the spring selling season. Given that new unit pricing has been significantly discounted, the swing to purchasing new versus used has moved toward the new market. Be aware that according to RVTrader.com, there are still over 29,000 new 2022 RVs on dealer lots, should you be in the market. We have heard of discounts of over 40% on some of these units as dealers greatly desire to clear older inventory. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has revised Elkhart County, Indiana's latest manufacturing employment data for April 2023. 
The revision shows that at the height of production last April through June of 2022, there were 77,200 people employed in manufacturing. For April 2023, this number stands at 70,500 people, down 6,700 since the peak. The employment number will likely sink further going into the fall as manufacturers and suppliers can't afford to keep employees on with the current demand shortfall. Accordingly, the unemployment rate based on May preliminary numbers has risen to 3.7% from 2.8% in April. Before we move on, just a heads up about our Twitter account. We use Twitter to push news updates and communicate more regularly on essential topics. Please take a moment, head over to Twitter, and search for at John Marucci to follow along. For the high-end market, inventory levels for Colonial Airstream in Millstone Township, New Jersey, one of the nation's largest Airstream dealers, continue to move towards a buyer's market with in-stock units remaining high. About a year ago, roughly 64% of Colonial's inventory was pre-ordered meaning only 36% of their Airstream inventory was either on the lot for sale or being delivered and available. As of June 28, 2023, roughly 84% of inventory is available for sale, with only 16% spoken for. This is a considerable increase in sellable inventory from a year ago and a pendulum swing to a buyer's market. It's not a bad time to be shopping for an Airstream. The caveat is that MSRPs have risen considerably in the past few years, so even discounted, these units can be very pricey. Also, the mix of units available looks to be higher trim levels, meaning higher prices. Gas prices have declined slightly in the past month. According to AAA, the current average nationwide price as of June 28th was $3.55.6 per gallon for regular unleaded down about two cents from a month ago, and down $1.33 per gallon from a year ago. An RV trip of 3,000 miles at 10 miles per gallon would cost $1,067 now versus $1,464 a year ago, about a 27% decrease year over year. For context, gas prices were at the highest ever recorded in June last year. Diesel prices declined even farther below the $4 mark, and now sit at $3.87.7, down about $0.09 cents from a month ago, and down $1.91 from a year ago. A similar 3,000-mile trip getting 15 miles per gallon would cost $775 now versus $1,157 a year ago, a 33% decrease. We are again going to cover the Florida State Park Reservation story this month simply because it is the biggest RV news story of the past several months and impacts many people, both residents of Florida and people who visit from out of state. Within 12 days of publishing last month's newscast, we had over 100,000 people watch the video and now have over 400 comments. As a reminder, the recently signed bill, CSHB 109, allows Florida state residents to book state park campsites 11 months in advance with proof of citizenship of Florida driver's license or identification card. Non-residents will now be curtailed to book 10 months in advance, a month later than residents. Before this change, non-residents could also book 11 months in advance. The law goes into effect January 1st, 2024. The range of comments on the subject was eye-opening, as I hadn't expected the content to spur the incredible outpouring of arguments and emotion on both sides of the issue. Here's a synopsis of many of the responses. First, there were dozens of comments from Florida residents who were very glad about the new law. The consensus was that this was fair to residents and overdue. The same group generally thought out-of-state campers take away opportunities for residents to use their state parks, especially during winter months. Some comments were blatantly unwelcoming while others argued clearly why this was a good idea. Even people from other states weighed in that this was a good bill for Florida residents. Some mentioned that other states are doing this as well. My take on this group of comments was that there was too much optimism given the 11-month window. Many talked as if they would now be able to find campsites finally. 
My concern was that these same people were not committed to planning and booking early. I did respond to several people mentioning that the only winners will be the Florida residents who plan out 11 months. If you are a Florida resident and not a planner, plan for continued frustration. The root problem here is that there is no incentive for Florida State Parks to increase camping capacity, so the supply shortfall will continue. Regarding other states doing similar things, I found some states with higher fees for non-residents, but none so far with earlier booking windows. Please comment if you have documentation otherwise. I'm in the process of updating our state park booking map, and accurate information is essential. Interestingly, I discovered that Michigan's DNR recently opposed a Michigan bill on a similar measure that Florida passed. The Michigan DNR, who manages Michigan state parks, opposed the measure, citing potential retaliation from other states and reputational injury for enacting such a law. The bill subsequently died, and the rep is no longer in the Michigan State House. Second, many people generally from other states push back. Many of these made the point about lost revenue from visitors since Florida sees much revenue from tourism. Others talked about Florida's reputational hit, given the latest message sent by the bill to people out of state. I think both counter arguments have some credence, yet likely won't have a significant impact. The change to Florida State Park booking window will affect a small portion of total Florida tourism dollars, and the reputational hit will also be minimal but unknown. I hold to my conclusion that the state parks will see a decrease in booking revenue given that snowbirds won't easily cancel reservations versus local residents. For example, when winter temps stay below freezing for a time, locals will be more likely to cancel than someone a thousand plus miles from home with no options. Unfortunately, I do not have further data from the state parks to show the differential and cancellation rates between residents and non-residents to prove this point. Third, the most powerful argument that came out of the comments likely had to do with the systemic issues with the current booking system. Right now, anyone who books online can book overlapping reservations, meaning one can secure multiple reservations and cancel the reservation not wanted up until the last minute. This leads to empty sites and lost revenue. A range of solutions was offered, including very high cancellation fees and fixing the system to not allow multiple overlapping reservations. Most agreed that the current policy causes much of the lack of capacity via last minute cancellations. Unfortunately, the new bill does nothing to remedy this. Finally, many non-residents who had used Florida State Parks for a long time were disappointed with the decision. I put myself in this group. Several of these folks said they would no longer be going to Florida, which is too bad. I suppose all good things in this regard come to an end. I didn't hear any of these people say they would now change to private campgrounds, so I think it will be a complete loss to them. Most from this group will likely stay home and give up RVing in the winter or go to another warm place. This is too bad, but a reality that can't be softened. Many will have to find other winter options. I stick to my conclusions from last month's newscast that the new bill isn't a good deal for Florida residents other than those who plan 11 months in advance. Those who do plan out that far in advance will face much less competition for winter camping spots. For everyone else, the same frustrations will likely remain. In conclusion, there are two things not covered in the last newscast that became apparent in the comments. First, the system needs to be changed to lower late cancellations and empty sites. And second, there is no incentive for Florida State Parks to increase campsite capacity even though Florida's population has grown. The former is a programming change to the system that could happen quickly. The latter is a problem with policy and state park budgets and a longer term challenge. Until more capacity is added, frustrations of getting campsites will continue, even with non-residents at a disadvantage. Okay, that should wrap things up. Let me know in the comments how you feel about these topics. Please take a moment and like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. This is John Marucci and so long for now. More wildlife here at Cold Creek State Park. Looks like a black racer going across our driveway here this morning.
First day of the year, going out for a walk. 2023.